In today's lesson over piecewise functions, we're going to deal with functions that are comprised of linear, absolute value, and quadratic functions. So in yesterday's lesson, we dealt with piecewise functions that were comprised of linear and constant functions. So we're going to be adding these two functions to our list. In this first example, the directions say, graph the piecewise function on the coordinate plane provided, then evaluate the function for the given values. So let's work through each of these. You may recall that a piecewise function is made up of different pieces of functions that have restricted domains. So let's start with this first one. And I, I shouldn't have put dots over each one of those because if you watched yesterday's lesson, you know that I'm going to color coordinate my functions. So let's start with this first one, the absolute value of x minus 3. And it's restricted to the domain x is less than or equal to negative 3 which means I'm going to graph this function, the absolute value of x minus 3, but I'm only going to graph the portion of it that's less than or equal to negative 3. So if you recall, in your transformations of absolute value functions, this right here is going to move my parent function down 3 units. So I'm going to take that what would be at the origin and move it down 3 units. And then you know an absolute value function, it would go up positive slope that way, negative slope this way, right? But because we're restricted to the domain, x is less than or equal to negative 3, we only need this portion of our function right here. We only need the part that is less than or equal to negative 3. And so I'm going to graph that part right here. It's going to go up and out forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And I put a closed dot right here because we are including the point at negative 3, which is negative 3, 0. That is included in this part of our function, or in this piece of our function. Let's move on to the next piece of this function, x squared minus 4. This is obviously a quadratic function that has been transformed or translated to be more specific, down four units. So if I take my quadratic function, which if I were to graph it, you know, it takes a specific pattern. I'm gonna take it, it would pass through the origin, and I'm gonna move it down one, two, three, four units. And then it's gonna take that same uh, pattern where from that origin, which is now at um, zero, negative four, it's gonna go out one, up one, out two, up four, and out three, up nine. So from that um, vertex right there, I would go out one, two, three, up there would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna put an open dot right there. And then over here, I'm gonna put a closed dot. Now, why would I do that? Something in this domain lets me know that I have an open dot right here, and it's this right here, X is greater than negative three. I am not including this point right here, which is negative three, five. I am not including that point in this function, okay? I'm not including it. However, over here, three, five is included in this piece of the function. So now if I graph it, it looks just like this. There we go. Okay, so it's not super pretty, but that's how it's graphed. And let's move on to the next piece of this function. The next piece of the function is a linear function, 2x minus 6. It would have a y-intercept of negative 6 and a slope of positive 2, but we're restricted to the domain x is greater than 3. So what you can do is you can start with your y-intercept, and you can go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, or you could start with what I like to do is plug in 3 for x. So instead of 2x minus 6, I'm going to plug in 3 for x. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, which means the point 3, 0 is where I can start from. 1, 2, right here, but I'm going to put an open dot right there. What would let you know that I'm going to have an open dot right there instead of a closed dot? This right here, x is greater than 3. I am not including this point in this piece of the function, 
And that's good to know because three is actually included in the domain in that part of the function that we graphed in orange. And now from that point, I know that x is greater than three, so I'm going to, from there, graph it with a slope of two, which is up two over one, up two over one, and then I can connect it and graph that. So there's what my function looks like when it's graphed on the coordinate plane. And now we're going to evaluate the function for these values down here. f of negative three, f of one, f of five, and f of three. And you may recall from yesterday's lesson that we need to make sure that whenever we're evaluating a piecewise function, we plug in that value into the correct piece, okay? So f of negative three, which piece of this function is it included in? The one that's graphed in blue, orange, or pink? The one that's graphed in blue, negative three is included in this piece of the function. Let me see if I can highlight that right here. X is less than or equal to negative three. And in fact, we already know what F of negative three is, it's zero. Let's move on to F of one. Which piece of the function is F of one included in? Where is, which domain is one included in? Is one less than or equal to negative three? No. Let's look at the one in orange. Is it between negative three and three? It sure is, which means we're gonna plug it into the piece that's graphed in orange, that x squared minus four. So f of one, I can look at my graph and I can see that f of one is actually negative three. I can also plug it into x squared minus four. When I plug in one for x, I get one minus four, which is negative three. Let's move on to number three, which is f of five. Which piece of the function is five included in? The part that's graphed in pink, because five is greater than three, which means I'm gonna plug in five into this function right here, two x minus six, two x, minus six, and I'm gonna plug in five for x. So two times five minus six. Two times five is 10, and 10 minus six is four. So f of five is four, which means five, four is a point on this graph. One, two, three, four, five, four. And as you can see, that point is located right here. So we can see it that it's graphed. Now f of three, which piece of the function is three included in the domain? Notice right here, a lot of students kind of get tripped up on this. It's included in the part that's graphed in orange. I have an, a closed dot right here on my graph where X is three. The one that's graphed in pink has an open dot. It is not included in that piece of the function, which means I'm going to look at the middle function in this piecewise function, which is x squared minus four. And as you can see, three, five, we've already got it right here. We've shown that it's included in the piece that's graphed in orange, which means f of three is five, right? What is, what is y when x is three? And it's five. Let's move on to our next example. Here we're given a piecewise function and we're asked to write the formula for the piecewise function and then define or identify the domain or define the domain for each interval. Then we're gonna evaluate the function for the given values. This says to include one linear, one absolute value, one constant, and one quadratic function. So let's do that. Let's start from left to right. And we'll start with this constant function right here. Constant function, it's just gonna be y equals, what is y equal here? y equals negative one, two, three, four, five, negative six. So negative six is my function, right? y equals f of x equals negative six. What is the domain restriction here where we're going one, two, three, four, five, six units to the left, which means x is less than negative six. Now, why would I put less than negative six and not less than or equal to? because I have an open dot there, which means I'm gonna have, I'm not including negative six in this particular 
um, piece of the function. So like negative 6, negative 6, that point right there is not included in that piece of the function, which means negative 6 will be included in the next piece of the function if this is a, con or not a continuous function, but um, let's move on to the next piece of the function. So the next piece of the function is our linear piece. And let's see how we're going to do this. Um, when we're given this linear function right here, and it's in this um, restricted domain, let's first identify the slope, which I'm just going to put some points on the graph. I've got a point right there and a point right there and then a point right there. I can clearly see, which means my slope is up 1, 2, 3 over 1. So I have a slope of 3. And now let's identify a point on this function. A point on this function would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, negative 4. And you could include, you could use any point on this particular graph. I'm just using the point um, that I see that's clearly graphed. And now we're going to write the equation for this linear function, okay, or for this line. We're going to write the equation for the line using point slope form of a linear equation which is y minus the y value, y minus negative 4 is y plus 4, right? I can combine those, that minus a negative, equals my slope, which is 3, open parentheses, x minus the x value, x minus negative 6 is x plus 6. And now let's simplify this. y plus 4 equals, let's distribute that 3, and I'm going to get 3x plus 18, when I subtract 4 from both sides, I get 3x plus 14, and that's the equation for the linear piece of this piecewise function. But now let's talk about what the, what the domain of this particular um, linear piece is. We know that the furthest left it goes is negative 6. I'm going to write that just like that. The furthest right it goes is 1, 2, 3 right there, negative 3, x is everything in between. That's how I do that. So I'm going to write it down here now. Negative 6 to negative 3, x is everything in between. Now we've got our, um, our inequality symbols. I know negative 6 is included in this piece. Negative 3 is not included. So I've got a line right here underneath this inequality, right? x is greater than or equal to negative 6, x is less than negative 3. Okay, and I'm going to erase some of this off of here so there's not so much going on, but I know this color designates that portion. Okay, let's move on to the next piece of this piecewise function. I clearly have a, an absolute value function here. I could have two linear pieces, but I've got an absolute value function here. So my absolute value function obviously has been flipped upside down. And it's been translated up one, two, three, four units, which would look like this. I've got a reflection across the x-axis, so the negative absolute value of x plus 4. And my slope on both sides is just negative 1 and positive 1, right? So I'm not, I don't have any kind of um, vertical stretch or compression here. Now let's talk about the restricted domain. It goes from that's the furthest left and that's the furthest right which is negative 3, and this is positive 3, x is everything in between. I'm going to write it down here now. Negative 3 to positive 3, x is everything in between. When x is everything in between, my inequality symbols always look like that. Okay, that kind of helps students. They always look like that, right? Because it's less than this number on the right, and it's greater than this number on the left. We're including that point on the left which means I'm going to have a line underneath it. We're not including the number on the right, so I'm not going to have a line underneath that. So there's that portion of the graph. Let's move on. Um, let's use green. This right here, it's curved, so that's going to be our quadratic piece. And as I look at this, I know from this vertex right here, I'm going to go out one, up one, out two, up four. So I know there's no stretch, vertical stretch or compression here. We're just translating this quadratic function down and to the right. So what is that going to look like? That vertex has moved one, two, three units to the right and four units down. So three, negative four is the point for that vertex. How do we show this in vertex form of our quadratic equation. Well, if we're moving right three units, 
it's going to look like this. X minus 3 squared, right? It's going to look opposite, right? X minus 3 squared, and then we're moving down 4, which is minus 4. And now, what's our restricted domain? We're including that point right there at negative or at positive 3 when x is positive 3, which means x is greater than or equal to positive 3. 3, negative 4 is included in this point, okay, or in this piece of the function. If I go up to this one up here, we can see that 3 is not included in this piece of the function. So let's move on, and now we're going to evaluate the function for these given values. All right, so we've got f of 5, and we need to see which portion of the graph 5 is included in the domain in, okay? 5 is a number that is greater than or equal to 3, which means it's going to be included in this quadratic piece right here right? So f of 5, I mean, because technically I could plug in 5 into any piece, right? I could plug it into this piece, I could plug it into that piece, I could, but because we have these restricted domains, we have to pay attention to the fact that 5 is only going to be included in this piecewise function, in this function right here, in this piece of it. So if I plug in 5 into this function, I could, I'm just going to plug it in, I'm going to show algebraically that it's 5 minus 3 squared minus 4, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared minus 4, 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0, so f of 5 equals 0, 5, 0 is a point in this piece of the function. Let's move on to f of 3, where is 3 included in my function. 3 is included in the green piece of the function, right? Right here. It's greater than or equal to 3. It's not included in the purple piece. And we already know that f of 3 is negative 4, right? What is y when x is 3? It's negative 4. So it's really important that you make sure you plug into the correct piece of the function. And that concludes your day two notes over piecewise functions. I hope it was helpful.